Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Ryan L. Cross with Mega Tech Nerd Video, and today's video I'm going to show you how to import Cinema DNG footage so you can edit it inside of um, Adobe Premiere CS6. Uh, you're going to need Adobe Premiere CS6, and you're also going to need some Cinema DNG footage. Hopefully, if you're watching this video, you've already um, accomplished both of those feats. All right, now you probably watching this video because at some point in time you downloaded the cinema DNG footage that um, Black Magic and John Brawley released and you tried to import it inside of Premiere Pro CS6 and you got an error message that said this file format is unsupported as you can see right now I have the workaround and you can see I got the clip right here I actually made the timeline already um, I could right click on the clip and it'll bring up the cinema DNG importer this is what you need to make that error message go away and obviously like I said this video I'm going to show you how to accomplish that um first what you need to do is you need to um relax and chill out because I know you've probably seen that error message a couple of times and <laughs> it's probably got you upset so what you need to do is you need to um, open up a browser go to labs.adobe.com slash technologies slash cinema dng and you'll open up this window read everything on there when you get the chance it's some real great information and uh, pardon but a train is gonna go by so you might hear that in the background but back to the video okay what you need to do is you need to um download you need to click on this link so I'm gonna just open it up in a new tab but you can just click on it and it'll go right to it and then what you need to do is um, read all of this information at some point in time in your life what you can see is you have the cinema DNG importer for Premiere Pro CS 5.5 for CS5 and CS4. Now you have Adobe Premiere CS6 and you're wondering where our version is. Same thing as me. What I realized after some trial and error is that this importer will work for Adobe Premiere CS6 and I was thinking about it it makes sense because CS5.5 is pretty much the same thing like it's gonna be the same thing as CS6 like well whatever they changed inside the software they didn't change whatever makes this work and that's what's important so if you have Mac or you have Windows download your um your version and I can't guarantee it's gonna work for Mac OS all I can guarantee is for Windows so um if you use Mac OS your mileage may vary but you'll just click on this link and it'll download inside of your browser, whatever browser you're using. Then what you do is you open up your um the zip file that you just downloaded. You're gonna end up something like this, depending on the zip, the program you have, your compression program. Um, but I use um 7-zip, and this is what it'll look like. And you'll take this right here, and just like any other plugin, you'll just open up a um an explorer window and you will go over to where your main hard drive is and just search for wherever your programs is so mine is in program files go to Adobe go to Adobe Premiere CS6 and then go down to plugins common and this is where you need to drop the file and as you can see we have the exporters and we also have the importers and you can see that you have the importers for different um formats and what you need to do is you need to just take this drop it inside of here Windows is probably gonna ask if you wanna um, change anything or if you actually wanna do what you're doing and since you do wanna do it then just click yes like I said I don't know how this works on, on Mac it's probably easier from what I hear but um, you do whatever you do and you'll find out what you find out but once you accomplish that make sure the, well, I forgot to tell you this when, I, when we started I had a problem when I was trying to do these videos before. Make sure that Premiere is closed and Media Encoder is closed. I don't know what happened, but I had a problem where I copied it over and I think this was open, where Premiere was open and then something happened with the importer and didn't work right and I had a little bit of time to troubleshoot. But once you, as long as you do it the right way with this closed and then you um, copy that over you drop it in and then once you open up Premiere you'll just same thing as you were trying to import it before as you can see these are DNG files you'll just select it image sequence is already grayed out and then you'll just come in and you'll just import your footage right there now once you get your cinema DNG files in there you can see that you can still go over the source settings and change whatever you want and you'll be able to like still keep the original metadata metadata and still be able to edit like the exposure and stuff like that one problem is that 
the Cinema DNG importer for Adobe Premiere CS 5.5 that we're using for Adobe Premiere CS 6 only is going to import 8 bits of this file. This file, well the, the image sequence, the files themselves are 12 bit. The importer is only going to let you bring in 8 bits. So once Adobe gets their, gets their stuff right, then I guess we'll be able to edit the 12 bit. Then you'll be able to edit in like a truly lossless workflow. But I found a workaround for that to be able to get the 12 bits in there. And I'm going to put that into another video because it's a little bit complex. But well, basically, it's just using PSD files. And I'm going to show you how to convert these to PSD files and then bring them in. But it's a little bit of a, um, it's a little bit outside the realm of this video. And if you need any proof, you could just come over and check out the release notes. And you can see that the importer only supports 8-bit frames. Frames with higher bit depth are not supported. So what that's telling me, unless I'm wrong, is that this file is only 8 bits, despite the fact there's 12 bits of information in it. Another thing that you need to um, be aware of is that once you import your Cinema DNG sequence, what you need to do is you need to right click, go up to modify, and go to interpret footage because it's going to interpret it as one frame per second. And you'll notice that it's super choppy. But in order to make it play back relatively smooth, what you need to do is just change this to 24p or whatever frame rate that you shot it at. Since um, John Brawley is in Australia, I think he was using 25p, but since I'm in America, I'm going to use 24p. I don't think there's going to be a difference. And um, I've done it before. We're importing these clips in. I've played it back at 24 to versus 25, and I've not, haven't noticed a difference really. So, as you can see, once I, if I had a rate array, I believe it would be this. The playback would be incredibly smoother. But the workaround is the old school workaround that we used to have to use before. It just render the work area, and once you render the work area, you'll be able to play back everything smooth. Now, are you willing to do that for how, however much footage you have? I mean, well, that's what we used to have to do, so to most people, it's not going to be new. If you're, like, brand new to video editing, then rendering the work area is probably something, like, way outside the realm of, you understand it? Like, you're probably looking, like, why did you just have to do that? But back in um, CS4 and, and before that, that's what you have to That's what you used to have to do. So that's what you have to do now, and... I'll show you another workaround where you could probably use like online, offline, where you make proxies and stuff like that. And I'll make that in another video. But right now, you can see we rendered the work area and we got smooth playback of the um, Cinema DNG sequence. And we still have the original file over here, the original Cinema DNG sequence over here. And you can um, go to source settings and change whatever you want, and it'll update. And unfortunately, if you update that file right there, you're going to have to re-render the work area again. So we have that. And that's why you would want to use proxies and the online offline method. But that's basically how you um, import some Cinema DNG footage into Adobe Premiere CS6. All right. And I don't think you have the problem inside of um, Adobe After Effects because it opens up in Camera Raw. And Camera Raw is Adobe's raw file editor I mean raw file processor so they probably should just put that inside of Premiere um, but I don't know if the the camera raw inside of After Effects is the same one from Lightroom and Photoshop and Bridge because in these ones you get to change the options whether you want it to be 8-bit or 16-bit so I don't know if the same one inside of After Effects because it doesn't give you the option to change it. So I don't know if it's bringing in the whole 12 bit. Or if it's just doing the same thing that Premiere did. Where it's only giving you 8 bits. But I found a workaround and all of that. Like I said before. And we're going to put that in another video. But right now we just accomplished what we needed. You got raw cinema DNG files. Inside of Adobe Premiere CS6. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments or whatever. Feel free to leave those in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Alright peace.